be seated. We are few in number here today, but we're strong in spirit. Amen. And uh, we do welcome those of you that are watching online. And we know that there's a good number of you doing that. Our prayers are with uh, so many of the families as even this morning, we've been receiving text of even more and different people that have COVID and are struggling. And so this is definitely a season for us to press into the Lord to his strength. Uh, and we're standing in love and in faith uh, that we are going to make it through and we will do it for the glory of God uh, and for his kingdom. I want to let you know on the announcement front for the, the flowers. I want to go back first to the flowers last week because somebody did pay for flowers and flowers were delivered even when we didn't have church. And last week, the flowers were given by Francis and Boddicker and they were in loving memory of her parents, Lee and Ann Moore. And they, they were beautiful flowers. They're down in Gail's office and just really beautiful. And we appreciate Francis and you giving those flowers. Today, this one's kind of unique to me because it seems like we did this a couple of weeks ago, but given by Helen Dunavant, and she may have cycled back around because they're given in loving memory of her mom, Thelma Purcell, and then also Lee Dunavant for their birthdays. And a couple of weeks ago when we gave them and mentioned them, the birthday was a couple of weeks out. And I don't know if we maybe had a gap or what happened, but again, beautiful flowers today and Helen Helen. Thank you, Ms. Dunham, for those, and I also continue to pray for you uh, in your recovery. I want you to know on the announcement front that this week we're pretty much everything's canceled. We're in recovery mode right now. Uh, there really aren't going to be any meetings. Even Celebrate Recovery on Tuesday night will not happen. Pastor's Bible study will not happen. Uh, we were going to have... I was so disappointed to lose this one. We were going to have homemade ice cream social tonight. And so we're not able to have that. And uh, so in a, in a very different form, Faith in Action will take place Saturday, but it's just going to be run by Gil and Candy. 
you may have received a text of the supplies that were needed and those can still be dropped off at the church this week in the morning. Gail is going to be here for sure in the mornings. We're going to discuss how that's going to work for us. We're not doing rice and beans on Tuesday. We're not coming to set up on Friday. Saturday morning, Gil and Candy will pass out bags to those people that drive up. We're not having people come in. And so it's going to be a very different and unique way of doing it. But we know that people need those bags and kind of depend on what we put in those bags, the supplies, the food, and the, that those things. So we're going to make sure we continue to do that even though we're not doing uh, it the way that we normally do it. So this week, kind of everything's done. We're going to be regrouping, healing, and then we'll come back and we're going to worship again next week. I do want you to know to pray for me and my family because on Tuesday uh, will be the memorial service for my father. Uh, my father passed away this past Monday. He was 90 years old. He had been a minister in the United Methodist Church. He had pastored at Clear Lake United Methodist Church at one point for 17 years. That church went from about 1,000, 1,200 people to a church that had 3,800 people. On a Sunday morning they had about they had three services and about 1,500 people would attend every Sunday. He moved from Clear Lake and he went to Kingwood United Methodist Church where he served five years before he retired and that church had about 3,500, 3,000 800 members. So some very large churches. He was a tremendous preacher. Uh, he loved God's Word. He taught God's Word. He taught through the Bible in a year, just every year for years and people would take that course uh, and it was a very powerful thing uh, and quite a man of love, quite a man of faith and uh, thankful for his life and he was ready to go be with the Lord. Some of you may know my challenge was I had just come down with COVID as my dad's physical condition turned so I wasn't able to go be with my mom and my sisters during that period of time but this Tuesday we're going to be having the memorial service in Georgetown uh, and our family will be gathering for that so please we have felt the love of the congregation during this time and we appreciate that and, and know that that's going to be taking place on Tuesday. With these announcements made, uh, we're going to continue in our worship. So let's stand and we're going to join together and sing him a praise for the glory of God.
was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. come to a time where we share our joys and concerns with each other and just to, to let you know there's there again there's a lot going on I'm probably not going to try to name everybody that has COVID that uh, it'd be a long list and I'm sure I would omit some and we're always learning that others uh, are having it uh, so we are mindful of that I do want to lift up Falma Cooch and especially uh, pray ask for us to pray for her she's had some physical challenges along the way and then also we're lifting her up because of the passing of her grandson in McAllen Christopher Cooch and uh, you know I know thinking about your child passing but then it's really something to think of a grandson and so then also Pat and Sylvia Cooch and Donna Cooch as well uh, we're remembering the Cooch family on Christopher's passing and so I hope any of you watching because I'm pretty sure Falma doesn't watch online and so any of you watching that know Falma please call her let's reach out and let her know that we love her and that we're thinking of her um, Wayne Flowers has obviously been on our prayers uh, in our prayers for a good number of weeks he's a former pastor certainly we were with his brother Mike in North Dakota and that brought him to our mind all the front and and this week I've been thinking he's been intensive care for a while so as I was thinking about this morning I was really thinking man I'm concerned if he's still in ICU and lo and behold the great news is he's been moved to rehab center and so I'm praying that that means that we're doing some better and we're really lifting up Wayne we're praying for him uh, and so thankful for his ministry of these years and praying for God to bring him to full recovery uh, we also, Pat Evans has had some uh, physical issues, and then also her family is struggling with COVID, so we think of, of her. Uh, Tony Weiss mentioned this a week back, but his sister, uh, Joanna, I think is how it says, has passed and, uh, like a couple of weeks ago, and we've talked about that, but want to continue to remember Tony, and we always are thankful for Tony for the encouraging things he posts through uh, Facebook and Messenger and he has a good ministry uh, by doing that. So uh, other joys and concerns here, oh, Jack Jack uh, Bland uh, at a and and I think a friend, roommate, have COVID. He was supposed to be home this weekend. So that means we pray for Meredith because Meredith always looks forward to seeing Jack and him not being able to come home. Uh, and then also, I just think it's been a hard week for our school administrators and our teachers that with just the craziness with COVID and everything like that. So uh, our hearts are with those teachers and praying strength and for our students for this school year and knowing that it's really kind of crazy. But we are lifting up, up Jack uh, in particular was asked and want to do that. I want to tell you, too, this morning we got a text from Danielle Boudreaux that Mason, I think he was skating or something yesterday and he and somebody ran into each other and that it has messed up his mouth the dental work and everything a very handsome young man and so uh, I know it, the report caused caused grave concern for just the, what's going to happen with all the dental work and all that so we're lifting up the Boudreaux and especially Mason and um, trusting that to come through uh, to a better place when that's done any other joys or concerns this morning? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My, I, I'm ditto on both of those because walked that my same. My wife um, has not had it, and while well, I've had it, and all that that means, and uh, yeah, and I'm just thankful. 
Yeah, to keep to keep being strong, keep walking strong, healthy, and we're praying for those that are recovering. I can tell you that on our older member front that Joyce Hewitt has has had it, been in the hospital, and really pray for her. Uh, she's in her mid-80s, and I know she sounded bad. Also lifting up J.C. Johns and his wife Doris, and they have had it in it's they're struggling because you know just with the deals there i'm going to mention those two just because they're two of the older ones that we know have it and are battling through and and we do have some battling so we're praying strength for that but these things in mind let's go to the lord in prayer and know that he is our strength and our redeemer father god we come to you today we're thankful that you are a good good father that you are mighty and powerful and that you are strong and able that you are our provider you're our healer you're our good shepherd father god and today we lean into you and to your strength to your presence and grace in our lives father god lord we pray for our country today uh, there's just so much going on in our country we feel a sense of strife and and disease in our country father god on so many levels we pray for our leaders we pray for understanding and grace and wisdom in our nation father god help us to love each other lord god give us understanding and grace toward one another even as we may have different ideas or perspectives <coughs> that we would still Understand that, that there's room for different ideas and different opinions and even ideologies, Father God. Lord, we pray for our nation that we would be one nation under God. Lord, we pray today we'll be indivisible. We pray that there would be liberty and justice for all. So, Lord, as we pray for our nation, then we, in the bigger picture, think of your kingdom. And we pray for your kingdom. We pray for your kingdom to come. We pray, Lord, for your will to be done on this earth. We pray for your will to be done in our nation, in our lives, in our churches, in our homes, in our school districts. We pray for the manifestation of your kingdom in this world in these days give us a heart for that keep us mindful of that lord you have heard all the different people for whom we're praying all the different situations and we know we haven't even listed them all we especially pray for those recovering from covid especially those within our church body Lord, I too will take the moment. I want to lift up our school administrators and all the decisions that they will face. We pray for our teachers and for strength and grace to them. We pray for our students and we just so desire that they kind of can have a normal school year and that they can learn. And yet that seems quite challenging, but we're going to pray and ask and trust and believe for that. Guide our steps, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you never leave us or forsake us and that you walk with us every step of the way. Hear us now as we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. This is when we would normally take our offering, and I just want to say to especially those watching online, please, if you would just be mindful to give online, to mail your check-in, especially when we miss a Sunday and we don't have church, that's very unusual, and we still have to pay our bills and the different things of that. So we're asking you just to be mindful of that and don't let that slip through the cracks, so to speak, in these days, and that you will just honor God with your tithes and offerings. This church has been so faithful over these last months and we're just going to lean into that and trust that you will continue to do that and we receive God receives the glory and the honor thanks and praise be to God and we give our offerings in praise to him today and we give thanks let's stand and join together in in the doxology as we praise God from whom all blessings flow praise God from whom all blessings flow
around. Higher ground, I think, Chris. Okay. You got it on there? We'll make them. We'll do it. We appreciate our guys up there. We are going to lift them. While he does that, I just want to say we really do appreciate them, our our tech guys upstairs, and especially in this day, being able to post the services online. This morning at nine, one of our guys has had. COVID and we knew he wasn't going to be here and then Aaron Dalton his wife Diana was getting out of the hospital we didn't mention that and so praying for her but Aaron couldn't be here so lo and behold Jason Berglund had to just walk up there knowing nothing and then Doug is amazing because Doug helped Jason so we appreciate and love you guys very much and we're thankful for how you're able to do stuff on the fly with us thank you very much and glad we can be online too I want you to know today that I am so blessed to have the privilege to come and preach the Word of God. Uh, I tell you, one of the reasons, too, is it's really bizarre because today will be my first time to preach since my father passed. And it's always interesting because for me, uh, my dad is with the Lord and the Lord's with me. So there's a way in which I'm closer to my dad preaching today than any other day that I preached. And uh, I grew up under my dad's preaching, under his teaching, and he loved the Word of God. He preached the Word of God, and that has shaped my heart and shaped my life. And I am so thankful for that legacy uh, in which I stand. And again, I'm blessed to preach the Word of God today. I'm going to go into Romans 8, and I'm going to read chapters 31 through 39. I'm going to tell you that I believe that Romans 8, 31 was one of my dad's favorite passages. He was born in 1931, so I think the 31 played in there. I think in high school football, he wore the number 31, and uh, I think it was off of this passage of Scripture in 831. But even as I read beginning of verse 31, I'm going to point to uh, verse 37 as being one of our key verses. And I'll, I'll draw attention to that when we get there. But hear these words of inspiration from Romans 8, 31 through 39. What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? For he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he, how he, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Because it is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. 
Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, or pandemic? <laughs> as it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long, and we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Here's verse 37. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither life, neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. I'm also going to go over into 1 Corinthians to the 15th chapter. And the whole 15th chapter is about resurrection and eternal life and talking about how that this mortal body can't put on the immortal, that it's a spiritual body. And, and so it's about resurrection and our resurrection in Christ. But the last two verses of chapter 15, this is what we read. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I pray today that by your spirit that you would speak, that we would have ears to hear, that we would have eyes to see. I pray, Lord, that even just as a vessel, an instrument, that you would use me to bring your word today, a word of hope, a word of truth, a word of power in difficult and trying times. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wouldn't it really be awesome if when we put our faith in Jesus, he just gave us a pass? I mean, a pass from all the sorrow, all the sickness, all the suffering of this world. Wouldn't that be awesome? You know, it does say that there's coming a day when He'll wipe every tear from every eye and that there'll be no more suffering anymore. The challenge for us is it's not now. We're not there yet. And in fact, as we look in the Gospel of John 16, Jesus says, I have told you these things that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. So God wants us to have peace, but he wants us to know that we don't get a pass. We're going to have trials and sorrows in this life. It's a part of living on this earth and a part of living on this planet. But then he's also telling us that he has overcome the world. I'm going to go in the gospel, in the gospel, in the book of James, some verses I'm sure we've heard. James 1, 2 through 4. I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation because it's a little different wording and sometimes that helps us hear it different than we usually hear it but in James 1 2 through 4 New Living Translation dear brothers and sisters when troubles of any kind come your way consider it an opportunity for great joy for you know that when your faith is tested your endurance has a chance to grow so let it grow for when your endurance is fully developed you will be perfect and complete needing nothing. So consider it, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. I'm going to challenge you here for a minute this morning. Can you remember back to January of 2020? January of 2020. Okay? May challenge you, but I can tell you I can do it kind of readily because every January I lead a men's retreat and in, the, and in these January retreats, we do a spiritual summary looking back at the year before and see how God was working in our life, what He was trying to teach us and show us. And so we look back. Well, in 2020, it was a new decade, so I not only look back into 2019, I look back for the whole decade to see how God had worked through the decade you know, of, of from 2010 to 2020 and then I was surprised when I began to look and to see how things happened in 2010 where God was launching me out into the next decade and and it was things you wouldn't have really known fully at that moment but then you look back and you see how in 2020 God launched me
stretched me out into a decade. And I want to tell you that stirred my faith in 2020, thinking, man, I pray that here in 2020, God will launch me out into this next decade in ways similar to what he did through those teen years, you know, through that decade and praying that. So great hope and great faith. 2020, 2020 vision, you know, was kind of talked about. And I can tell you great anxiety. Great It wasn't anxiety at that point. It was great excitement. But it began to become anxiety as in February you could kind of sense there was stuff going on in 2020. In March, in the first weekend of March of 2020, I had a friend of mine getting married in Houston and I drove him down to Houston and I was going to be the best man in his wedding. And so so that whole weekend was kind of taken up with the wedding and focusing on all of that. And I'm thinking that that weekend was the weekend that the Big 12 basketball tournament was just canceled, okay? My friend and his his wife, his bride, on Sunday morning got on a plane and flew to Hawaii for their honeymoon. I came back, and all of a sudden as I came back, stuff started being canceled. I am a basketball fan, and all of a sudden March Madness got canceled. Now, you knew that was a big deal because these sporting things generate millions of dollars for networks, colleges, and everything. And so for them to cancel something of that magnitude lets you know there's something serious going on. I watched a Mavericks basketball game, and when the game was over, they said, we are now announcing that the NBA season has been canceled from here on out. And and all of a sudden, I began to worry that my friend and his wife were even going to get back from Hawaii, you know, because over that next week, it was incredible how much was being shut down. Can you kind of remember that? And, 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 of course, it, uh, the pandemic, we had never seen anything like it in our lifetime. And it was carried back to compared to something that happened in 1918, if I believe it was. And it was more even just isolated to Philadelphia. But because of the world that we live in now and all the travel and everything, it really was being able to tell it was going to be a global pandemic, unlike anything we've ever known. And that's certainly been the journey, hasn't it? Uh, I can remember last spring at Wesley McCabe Church going into the sanctuary and preaching to a totally empty sanctuary. But So it was recorded because all we were going to do was post the sermon online. And I remember how weird that was. So I'm thankful this morning for our few, our proud, our brave here because it's lots easier. Your smile is just warming my heart today and helping me out. So thank you, Jesus, that you're here. And I am thankful for those watching online. And I pray that God's Spirit will minister the truth of this to you and that you'll hear what I'm trying to say. Because, because last year was really something. I'm going to jump forward to this past February. Can you remember this past February and all of a sudden you began to look at the weather forecast and you saw negative temperatures in our forecast and you're like, don't we live in Texas? And and then you're thinking, it can't really be as bad. And sometimes the weather, they have a way of playing things up, making it worse. But I want to tell you, I went back and looked at my journal in February this year. And one of the mornings I wrote in my journal, it's negative four degrees outside. Negative four. And we live in Texas. So, so here's what I'm wanting to tell you. There's some things beginning to take place that just seem almost apocalyptic in nature. You know what I'm saying? I mean, almost apocalyptic in nature. I'm going to go back about three or four weeks. Do you remember three or four weeks ago when there began to be fires in California? And, and I mean, that's not that uncommon, but the temperatures that were associated with those were really something. I'm going to go back about three weeks ago. I have a friend, Mike Garst, who right now is in Germany, and it was up and down whether he was going to be able to go. He goes and he does ministry in Germany, and so I'm praying for him and the ministry there. But Germany being on my mind, about three weeks ago, I remember seeing a picture in the newspaper, and it was a picture in a, in a city village in Germany where a part of the village had just been washed away just washed away. It was gone. And I remember reading a quote that one of the 
government officials goes, it's hard for me to believe that this can happen in a first world country where a part of a village just gets swept away. And there was loss of life because it happened at night and many people were just in their homes and, and incredible. I'm going to go to about two weeks ago. I was looking at the newspaper and saw a picture and it was from China and it was the picture of a freeway in China but what made it unusual was the freeway was under four to six feet of water and what was on the freeway was about a hundred life rescue boats and each one had five to six people in it floating where it used to be the freeway do we begin to wrap our minds around the fact that it just seems like there's something apocalyptic beginning to take place? We can read in the scriptures where it says that the earth groans in travail for the return of Christ. And, and, and I don't know, but maybe through some of these things we might even begin to think that, that, that it's almost getting apocalyptic. And I'm not saying that for fear, I'm just reading the signs of the times and there's things that we never maybe dreamed we would have seen and, and, and things happening you know, in, in our earth and, the, and those type things that are just on an on a unbelievably massive, strange scale uh, and it's difficult to process. Here on this earth we will have trials and tribulations, Jesus said. I need you to bear with me for just a minute because I'm going to go on a more personal side, okay? Uh, Debbie and I were so blessed when we were appointed to First Methodist Glade Water last July. So excited to come. It was unique coming to a new church in the midst of the pandemic. We had just really started having church back again here. And uh, so attendance was lower, but we were online. And it was a, such an exciting, awesome time for Debbie and I. Debbie and I, our parents have been healthy through the years, and we've been so blessed. But uh, in October of 2019, Debbie's dad had a quick onset of dementia. It was very quick, and, 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 and it was very challenging mentally for him. You always remind me of him just because just your profile, and he was a coach you know, like you. You all have very similar history in your, you know, he moved into administration and all those kind of things. But one of the things I will tell you is he was in his 80s, and he, he participated in Senior Olympics in his 80s, okay? And in his 80s, he would go to meets and he would participate in the discus, the shot put, the triple jump, the javelin throw, the high jump, the long jump, the pole vault when he could get a pole, the hammer throw, the 50 meter dash, and the 150 meter dash. And he participated in all those things. And he would win gold medals on a regular basis. I want to tell you that there was one state meet that he went and entered in a state meet. He entered in all 15 of those events. And they were going to be held over two days. And he won 15 gold medals. And he set records in four of those events. Debbie has a picture of him his two favorite things were the javelin and the triple jump. Those were his two favorite events. And Debbie has a picture of him in his 80s throwing the javelin. It's like the picture's like this. He's throwing the javelin and just every muscle in his body like is just taut and tense and you look at it and it's just a picture of fitness. It's unbelievable. And you think, I want to be like that when I grow up. You know, like, man, it was, it was just, he trained, he worked out, and he loved participating in those events. Just to throw in, after he turned 60, he high-pointed every state in the United States, every point in the United, he went to the high point in every state of the United States except for Alaska, Denali, and we really discouraged him. We wouldn't participate We wouldn't with him and encouraging him to do Denali. A lot of times we would take family trips and go with him to stay down in cabins while he went and did his crazy thing, you know, to get to the height and we were eating hamburgers and hot dogs and waiting for him to come home. And uh, But he went to the high point of every state in the United States. 
so here's what am I going to all that. If you'd have asked me out of, out of our parents, which one of our parents would have lived the longest, being he was going to live the longest because doing all of that stuff. And yet, the crazy thing was, he was the first to go out of all of our parents. And I mean, it was just unbelievable. It's unfathomable to, to know that. And so last August, toward the end of August, uh, he broke his hip and he didn't live through the weekend. His funeral was on Monday, September the 7th uh, last year. And uh, it was a graveside out way out in the country. And uh, as we did his graveside, we were able to do it uh, online and people watched and participated. And all the family was able to be there. It was very powerful, but really unexpected and sad. That was on Monday, September the 7th. On Tuesday, September the 8th, I drove home from Waco. I got home late afternoon. I scrounged myself some dinner because Debbie was still with her mom. I finally sat down about 7 o'clock. I was just fixing to relax when my phone rang, and it was my middle sister calling to say that my mom had just had a stroke and that it was pretty severe and that she was on her way to the hospital and to please be in prayer, you know, for my mom. I'm obviously thinking of my dad because, you know, the things going on with my mom. And so uh, my mom had a stroke the, the day after uh, that happened. And so all of a sudden our parents went from incredible health to now one having passed, one having had a stroke. My dad served in the Korean War. And uh, you always got to hear stories of Korea, which were and unbelievable how he survived. He was a part of the Chosin View, which is its own story. 30,000 went in, only 10,000 came out. He was one of the 10,000 survivors, and he had amazing stories to tell about Korea. I hope someday to write a book at some level called Mrs. Miller's Little Boy. And uh, he got labeled that by a very vile sergeant. And it's almost like drawing attention uh, that he was a prayer warrior's child. And I think boss's prayers helped see my dad through Korea. And uh, that, his stories of Korea would come out in his preaching and his teaching. But during that time, he received a transfusion of blood that brought disease into his body that he didn't know that he had till he was 75 years old. And at 75 years old, during a regular checkup, they told him he had this disease and that he was very sick and they probably didn't think he was going to live very long. They put him on a treatment. The treatment made him lose his appetite and just kind of feel you know, nauseated. He didn't like it. So after a little bit, he went in and he said, tell me how this, treat, this treatment is helping me. You know, what's the degree? And the doctor goes, well, it's about 50-50, you know, that it's going to help you. We think it will. My dad said, if it's 50-50, then I'm chunking the treatment. I'm not doing that anymore. I'll go with the other 50. And us as children, we're like, oh, my gosh. And that's my dad. That's so totally my dad. But, but at 75, we thought he's not going to make it two years, you know, especially declining the treatment. But lo and behold, that was when he was 75. It wasn't until he was 88 that he had any more problems. But at 88, three different things happened, and he got really sick in the hospital, and we didn't know if he was going to make it. It took them a little bit of time to extract him out of that, you know, to work it out. Things were working against each other and to get him out, but they did. Uh, but then it was just very knowing that this thing's going on. It was in March or April of this year that he went into the hospital and it was bad. And he didn't like going to the hospital ever. We had to kind of drag him in. He fought every step. I think he actually left before he was truly discharged. Uh, but, but they did some things that were, they said, this is going to last about four to six weeks. And then we're not sure what's going to happen after that. We wanted him to make it to his 90th birthday, May 22nd. And sure enough, he made it to his 90th birthday. But I want to tell you, my dad was ready to go home. He had lived his time in this life, and he loved that and all that. But he was beginning to focus on the reward of his faith and, and, and just go into the next life. He wasn't wanting a prolonged physical battle or anything like that. He was just ready to go home. And, and glory to God, this past week, God took him home. But what I want to tell you is that, 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 that there's been some challenging things, okay? But this week, going through all of this, what I want you to know is that in Christ we have the victory. 
in Christ, we are more than conquerors, greater than COVID, greater than the death of a parent when we can't be there in anything. We have the victory in Christ. And, and while things sometimes appear almost apocalyptic in nature of watching the things going on in our world and all of that, and then pandemic and all of these things, what we need to know as Christians is that we don't have to despair, that we should, as best we can, move through it to count it all joy. That doesn't mean the first time we hear it or the first thing that happens. I want you to know it's very real for my mother-in-law, Linda, whom I love very much, uh, as she now has lost her spouse and that struggle of keeping going in life, you know, in a different way now, that struggle is real. The struggle for my mom losing her spouse, being very, you know, much, needing much care because of her uh, stroke and not able to do very much for herself. So one of the things, those things are not diminished. Okay, but the thing is, in all of that, we still have the victory in Christ. Linda has the victory in Christ. My mom has the victory in Christ. I have the victory in Christ. Tuesday, when we go and we have the memorial celebration for my dad, my dad has handed us an incredible legacy on so many fronts, and we know where he's at, and we have the victory in Christ. Uh, I'm the biggest baby in the world, so me and pray God for Debbie while I was going through COVID you know I hope I didn't whine too bad I think I tried to do okay and not whine too bad I know I did a lot of sleeping and sleeping's good because it's hard to whine while you're sleeping and so I'm not but but I also didn't want to you know I want to walk through this thing for the glory of God and his strength and his power and today that's what I want to say to us as we go through this pandemic so many in our church people being sick for me in my life with a lot of there have been some hard and challenging things Things, and yet I'm going to do my best to count it all joy, to give glory to God, to persevere, and for us to make it through. For all of you that are still struggling with COVID, hear the word of the Lord. We have the victory in Christ. And, and it doesn't mean that we may not have trials and sorrows. I wouldn't have been gra great. You're a Christian. You don't get COVID. <laughs> But that's not what the Bible says. That's not the reality of God's Word. We go through the things of this earth as many other people do, but we want to put our faith and our trust in our Lord Jesus Christ and put our focus on Him so that maybe we go through it a little bit differently uh, as we go through, as we come out, or if we don't come out. We still have the victory in our Lord Jesus Christ. And... and and to live this out day by day. So I lift my head today and I give thanks to God. I think, I think one of the things that, that's a powerful thing in any circumstance or any situation is to know that there's things for which to be thankful. And, and so, you know, it's real easy if you, to fall in the ditch but the ditch isn't where we want to live. And, and try not to fall in the ditch. Or if you do, let's get out and let's fix our eyes back on the Lord and know that we have the victory in Christ. We're In just a moment, we're going to take Holy Communion. And Holy Communion is how Jesus won the victory. He won the victory for us by dying on the cross of Calvary. By His blood, He purchased the victory. And because of His sacrifice and what He did, that's why we have the victory today. So that's why we're going to take Holy Communion because that's the way of entering into that victory and that victory entering into us because, because of His sacrifice and His death, we have the victory today and in these days, no matter what happens, no matter what comes, we have the victory in Christ. And then a part of walking in that victory is learning how to give thanks in every circumstance, in every situation. We always have things for which to be thankful. One of those things is He never leaves us or forsakes us. When we're sick, when we're well, when we're good, when we're not so good, when we're abounding, when we're not abounding, he never leaves us or forsakes us. If God is for us, who can be against us? And that's how we have the victory in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to tell you just one last word on this. It's interesting as a pastor putting a sermon together because like um, declare the victory when things are hard. And, and so I was looking at that and then I read something this week where there was a place where somebody lost, but they were saying they didn't lose. You know, and, and then it's like, 
I don't want I don't want to be standing up here saying you know oh you we lost but we didn't really lose you know and it, then it's like but I'm not saying that because we win we have won the victory in our Lord Jesus Christ I'm not saying we lost but we didn't lose no we actually we had the victory in our Lord Jesus Christ amen okay then yesterday um, I was on Facebook and and this guy posted a post and it was whining to the max. I mean, it was whining about our world. It was whining about everything that I'm trying to be proud to be American. But in these days, wah, 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 wah. And then, like, I got concerned. I'm like, I don't want to get up there and whine. <laughs> you, you know, like, I don't want to be a whiner, you know. And so, please, as I'm telling you some hard things maybe that have happened in the world or in my life, I want to tell you I'm not whining. I am a grateful believer in my Lord Jesus Christ. And that doesn't mean like when somebody passes in your life, that can be a hard time. It's a difficult moment, but I'm not whining. I'm telling you, even in every one of these things, I have the victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. I can deal with what's going on in our country better because I have faith in my Lord Jesus Christ and He is with me and He is going to lead us to a place of victory. So it's been weird even preparing the message, some of the ways that things challenge you uh, in that. And so now we're going to come to our time when we share in Holy Communion. I'm excited to do this because this is celebrating how we have the victory. It's the service of word and table. So we will join together in preparing our hearts to participate in Holy Communion. Christ our Lord today invites to His table all who love Him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved You with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done Your will. We have broken Your law. And we have rebelled against Your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's all pray in silence. Lord, we too would ask for the conviction of the Holy Spirit, even in this moment, just the places where we have fallen short, where we have not counted it all joy per se, um, to speak by your Spirit to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. So in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. I got to tell you, I've been, I've been excited about this part of the liturgy right here because it talks about giving thanks and, and how it's right to give our thanks and praise. That's out of Psalm 92, by the way. The first part of Psalm 92 is really awesome. And, and one of the ways that we live in the victory of Christ when we're going through the hard times is we give thanks. So let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and it's a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty. You are the creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of His suffering, His death, and His resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave Himself up for us, Jesus took the bread. He gave thanks to you, Father, and He broke the bread. He gave it to His disciples and said, Take and eat, for this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
Then when the supper was over, Jesus again, He took the cup. He gave thanks to you and He gave it to His disciples and said, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so now, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the great mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here today on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Meredith, did you get your special kind today? Did what? Hey, Mike. You see that little plastic, the plastic? He got it. Okay, so she got it. Very good. Hey, there's enough of us here. We need to take care of the few, the proud, and the brave. Okay? Very good. Awesome. We're going to take this today. And the first thing you do is you remove that little cellophane part, just the cellophane part at the top. And that gives you access to the wafer. The wafer is symbolic to us of the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Did we make it? The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, broken for you and for me, let us take and eat and be thankful today. Lord, we are thankful. The victory that comes to us through Jesus today. Now, very carefully, you're going to pull back the, the foil, which will then give access to the juice, which is symbolic of the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that was shed on the cross of Calvary so that we might have forgiveness of sins today. Thank you, Lord, for that forgiveness. Let us take and drink together. Thank you, Lord. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ by which we have the victory even today and in these days and eternally we have the victory in Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's stand to close and sing our praise to the Lord. Standing on the promises. One of the, one of the things I hope today is that you have promises from God's Word on which you stand. That is another way giving thanks. To, to, is a way to get us through to know we have the victory but also know the promises that we stand on just like Romans 8 37 that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us uh, and so let's stand on the promises today
again, few in number here, but I know there's a good number of you watching online and that we are God's family together. So here's the benediction. Who are we? We, we are, are God's family. family. And we have come to worship the Lord and to give Him praise. Now we are sent by God to be the glory of the Roman disciples of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for the way you love us. We ask you now to lead us by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Who are we? We are Christ's family. And now He sends us out into the world as brothers and sisters in Christ to live in His victory, to live our lives for His glory, even in these tumultuous times. And raise us up as prayer warriors in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Be blessed today.